Welcome everyone to the January 2023 meeting of the Houston County Historical Society. We have a sign-in sheet. We would like for you to sign in. Uh, please silence your phones. We'll start off with the pledge to the flag. Dr. Martin, if you would be so good. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. some expenses at our, our last meeting for the, the food and we had two hams at the hand giveaway but that would appear in the 23 financial reports but uh, we have $2,600 in the checking account and a CD has a value of $11,400 for 2022 we had a net loss of $590, but a good portion of that was the money that we had allocated to the brick account. We reimbursed it. We sent that money to the city of Erin because they are taking over that project. Um, that now. Okay. Any corrections, additions? Anybody have any questions about our financial situation? Everybody knows me, but I'm Melissa Barker. I'm the Houston County Archivist and Records Manager. Um, before I get to what I was going to show you, um, we still have prints available. We have one of the 88 Steps to Knowledge print by Miss Alice Miles. It's $25. And we have about 20 of the courthouse prints available. They're $50. Uh, these, the, the courthouse prints are numbered. They're also by Miss Alice Miles. Um, if you remember, Ms. Benetta James found these in her home because she used to be the secretary and uh, brought them to us for us to sell. So the uh, Historical Society had them years ago to sell, but we're selling what we have left. So you can uh, give them to me. These are at the archives, so if you want to get one later, you can come by the archives and pick one up. Um, I wasn't here in December, so um, we've had a lot of records donations made to the archives and we've also made some eBay purchases. If you remember, the Historical Society allocated $100 into an account or to a line for us to purchase historical items off of eBay that once was here or from about here. So we, I get email alerts in my email for certain uh, words that I put in to alert me. And so that's how I find out about these things. So but I would tell you, one of the first things that I got was a postcard. It's an original postcard. It is postmarked 1911. It was sent to a Miss Effie Broom, not Boom, but Broom, in Palmyra from somebody who signed it TK. 
So if that means first and last initial, there's not a whole lot of K names in Houston County. I have to think of Knight. But this particular, it's a picture postcard. Um, and as some of you may know, picture postcards, sometimes the picture is for the tourist only. But many times, actual photographs are made into picture postcards. Um, so I reached out to a photographer friend of mine that I know to tell me, is this a real picture postcard that would have been taken here in Houston County? And he said, yes, that this is a real picture postcard. Unfortunately, we don't know who the person on the horse is or what creek in Houston County this is. So we, I'm going to leave it up here and you can look at it maybe. I don't know if you can recognize the creek or not, but it was taken in 1911. So we got that off eBay. Um, we also got this photograph. This came across my email, and I was very excited to find it. On the back, it says, Estes Kefauver, that's how you say his name, in Erin, Tennessee, dated March 22, 1952. It was taken by the Cleveland Press out of Bradley County, Tennessee. And so now I'm on the hunt to identify where in Erin this was taken. Donna and I have looked at it, and we, then I looked at some pictures of the old courthouse, and I think this was taken in the old courthouse. We have, we have like only two, maybe three pictures in the old courthouse. So this is a huge find. We can't identify anyone. There's Mr. Estes Kefauver here. Um, Gary thought, thinks that this gentleman here is J.T. Fazell. Um, and Mr. Sid thinks that this gentleman looks like his brother. <laughs> so I'm going to put this up here too. Um, the pot belly stove is very interesting to me. If anyone can tell me what this top portion of this pot belly stove was used for, I would really like to know because it looks really weird. Yeah. But I got this off of eBay as well. Uh, so I'll put that up here. Say that well. The other photograph I wanted to show you came from Miss Brenda Lewis. She donated some wonderful original photographs that were just like this, they're on cardboard. Uh, the other three photographs are from the New Hope School from the early 1900s, late 1800s. They're fantastic. But this one is a mystery. Donald and I have been studying it. Um, at first glance, it looks like it's a sawmill, locally. Uh, but when you really look at it, there is some stuff in here that looks like it's industrial <coughs> sometime. Still late 1800s, early 1900s. Donald, do you think it may be... The only thing I could think of was the steam plant, electric plant over yes. there at Erin. Yeah, the Erin steam plant. Mm -hmm. Maybe when they were building it. Very, very interesting photograph, so please look at that. And the donations we've gotten um, since I talked last, um, fantastic stuff. We got a photo album that belonged to, and I'm going to say this whole name because she was married a couple of, more than once. Uh, Ann Reynolds Conway Rye. Brenda, did you ever find no. it? Look at it. Okay. So if you know that person, um, we have a photo album that mainly is from when the time she was married to Mr. Conway. Um, and so there's some pictures in that. And then also a, a big envelope, I didn't bring in, <coughs> uh, photographs from Tennessee Ridge, actually, that belonged to um, I can't think of, Mrs. Mary. Yeah, Miss Buchanan, Mobley, was it Mobley Gladys? Mobley Buchanan, I think was her name. But there was pictures of the Chancellor Ridge Baptist Church from the 18, or 1980s and 90s. Um, there's pictures from the 1940s from the Dan Mobley store and the Tennessee Ridge Baptist Church from also the 1940s or about whenever it was built. These two were actually donated by Mary Chapel Ricketts. These collections were actually entrusted to her by these people several years ago, and she says she doesn't know what to do with them. She brought and donated them to us. Um, I mentioned Brenda Lewis donating those pictures. Uh, Miss Norma Dalton donated a fantastic home demonstration scrapbook. The scrapbook's about this, this thick, and it belonged to a Miss Robin Six. S-I-X is her last name. Do you remember her, Ms. Walker? Yes. Yeah. She's our president of the Okay. Home migration today. Yeah. But the, which became the Home Demonstration Club became the FCE, right? Yes. And so it's got pictures, it's got programs, newspaper clippings. It's fantastic. So you can come out of the archives and see that. Um, and sometimes I'm caught out just like on a Saturday or Sunday when I'm doing my own shopping and people will run me down to give me things. 
I was at the dollar store a week or so ago, and Miss Dennis Powell from Southern Air, uh, a bingo's daughter, uh, I was in the store and she saw me. She says, "Oh, I have something in my trunk for you." So okay. <laughs> so she gave me a, uh, a photo album, a scrapbook, whatever you want to call it, from the Powell family. Um, it has photographs, it's got documents, um, some fantastic records in there about the Powell uh, family. Beulah Powell, does anybody remember Beulah Powell? Okay, a lot of the, their records and things. Um, and then tonight, I want to point out Miss Kay, where's Kay? There you are. She, um, can you tell us about this Kay? Um, when Donald and I were there last year making pictures of the board, we told them how important the old annuals are and we wish that we had them currently every year given to us. So they said, well, we'll try to oblige. And so the Erin Elementary has given us some extra copies of annuals. And they gave some last year when we were there. And then they gave us three more this year. Okay. So she's given us some that. We will add it to our, we have a collection of uh, yearbooks, annuals in the archives. Um, if you have any old yearbooks or annuals, please, please consider donating them because that's probably one of the top five requests that we get, either by email, Facebook, or telephone. People call looking for photographs or information about their parents, their grandparents, in yearbooks. So that's why we have those available. Um, and then the last thing I'll tell you about is something we don't have yet, but we've been told we're going to get. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Dave Clark. He lives in Murfreesboro. He is a grandson of Joseph Dixon. Um, a, a nephew to um, Sarah Dixon and he used to be in these parts he used to fish off the Danville Bridge he told me um, he would go to the Dixon family reunions at Ruskin Cave he has a, I don't know where we're going to put it but he has a chandelier that actually was at Martha's Chapel and he wants to donate it to the archives so I've just talked to him in the last couple of days. He lives in Murfreesboro, so he's gonna he's gonna get that to us. Uh, so, but anything else that you all run across in your attic, basements, closets, uh, just remember the archives because um, we really are getting a lot more visitors now that we put our sign out um, and people looking for information on their ancestors, people doing research, different aspects of Houston County, and we can't help them or show them records if we don't have them. So. That's all I've got. Look at these pictures. If you do anything you can tell me about them, please let me know. <coughs> okay, Melissa has pretty much taken care of my old business. Uh, the new business that one of the directors met earlier. Um, we have the 2023 proposed Houston County Historical Program for 23. We can mark one off of the list for tonight. We do February show and tell. Due to the weather, it's easier to cancel a show and tell than it is someone coming from out of town to speak. March, we support the St. Patrick's celebration festivities. May, we may or may not have the meeting at the McCampbell Pavilion out on Yellow Creek, depending on what Alan and Vanetta can come up, and I don't think either of those representatives are here tonight so I can't speak for them. In June we will have a joint meeting with Stewart County Historical Society that will be held here this time. We have July open August the 19th that's our big meeting. Instead of having our normal second Tuesday meeting in August we will have the World War II presentation on August the 19th at 2 o'clock at the Houston County High School Forum. Uh, we still would request if you have any World War II information, pictures, anything, Donald, Melissa, just get them to us and we can expand that program. It's going pretty good, right, Donald? Yeah. September is open, October is open, November is our annual archives program with Melissa at the Archives Museum in the basement of the uh, courthouse. December the 12th, we may or may not have a program. I think Kay has uh, volunteered to do the railroad workers, the Irish. Irish railroad workers, fellowship, membership, drive, and meal. When we have a meal or when we have food, the meeting is at 6 o'clock. Otherwise, it is at 7. 
Now, Melissa's going to put all this in your minutes um, that you will be sending out. We mail out about 45 minutes per month. Uh, if you can update yours, if you have uh, an email, that would keep us from having to mail those out. That would save us money. We have, in the board of directors meeting, we decided not to increase the dues. We have money in money market and uh, CD, so dues are have been in the past. We were looking for membership, uh, not membership. We're looking for places to have or presenters for our program. Um, we've had some suggestions. If you have a program you would like to present, we'd love to have you. We have some open, and uh, we'd love to have you present. And I'll turn the meeting over to the new. County Mayor, Mr. Joey Brake, and after uh, his presentation, we'd like to make pictures of the new officers and the board of directors, so don't run off. the opportunity to gather together to study and understand uh, those that have passed in the history of our area. We ask that you watch over those that are here tonight as they travel back to their homes and give us guidance as to uh, how we should perform our various duties. Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, uh, like uh, this Deborah Stanfield, Mr. Bill Mayo, Melissa Barker, and Ms. Lee Baggett to come forward. Where are you? by the Houston County Historical Society to serve as an officer of this organization for the year of 2023. To the best of your ability, will you promise to fulfill the duties of the office to which you have been elected as those duties are presented in the bylaws of this organization? to serve on the Board of Directors for 2023. Will you promise to fulfill your responsibility as a board member, attend meetings whenever possible, contribute your ideas and talents to fulfill the purpose of the Houston County Historical Society as laid out in the bylaws of this organization? Thank you. Thank you. Start out with 
Uh, I am Joey Jordan, and uh, I am uh, newly elected county mayor of Houston County. I was elected August the 4th, 2022. Uh, really don't know why I ran, but uh, I love this county. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, and good Lord calls, I'll be put at Great Cemetery. 149. But uh, I, I've been a county commissioner since 2010, and uh, but probably two years ago, I, I had always thought about the mayor. I thought about it four years ago, and I didn't do it. And Mr. Uh, Freddie Parsman, I don't know if you know him or not, probably one of the best guy you'll ever meet. About two years ago, I was at Southern Service getting diesel fuel, and he told me, he said, you ever thought about running for mayor? I said, no, really. I said, I have, but I haven't. He said, I think you'll do a good job. <laughs> and that meant a lot coming from him, because he was as good as it comes, I promise you. Uh, I just passed away about a week ago, a week and a half. So, we were sitting at the kitchen table, we in the wire fair in February, and and just out of the blue, I said, you know, I, I think I'm going to run for mayor. <laughs> and uh, she looked at me and she, she said, I just don't believe it. <laughs> she was all, she's a good, great cook and cooks good, but I ate out of can for about a week. <laughs> she, she didn't cook for about a week, but she, she finally told me, she said, well, I'm, I, will, I will support you. She said, I think you're crazy, but I will support you. So... Uh, we started, we made an announcement and made the journey and it actually turned out the Lord's will was good. So some of, you know, when we first came in, we had ideas, things we wanted to change and we seen we're not, not knocking anybody in the past, but if you're going to be in the government, you need to kind of run it as a business. I mean, there is... Uh, my my first agenda when I came in was the talking point of the county, the landfill. It seemed like it was a hot topic. Uh, I got swore in on Thursday. We had a holiday on Monday or Tuesday morning. I went to the landfill. That was the first place I went. And I stayed up for a couple of days and we, we seen some things that we could do different. And so about the second day I was up there, Montgomery by county, they haul our garbage for us out of Clarksville, and uh, the truck driver pulls in with an empty dumpster, and he unloads it, and I'm sitting there watching him, and he, we got about a half empty, about a half full dumpster over, and he goes in there back under it, and I looked at him, and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting this dumpster, carrying it back to Clarksville. I said, well, it ain't but half full, and he said, that's the way we've always done. I said, well, this will be your last one. I said, I promise you. He said, well, who are you? I said, I'm the guy that's going to stop you from his half And I didn't tell him who I was. I, never, I didn't do it to be mean to him. I just, that, that's not good business. Uh, our landfill was, our hauling garbage was costing us from $36,000 to $38,000 a month, every month. The last, since September, we've, we've went from thirty-seven to thirty-eight to we got our bill for December, and it was $26,000. We were saving about, on average, ten dollars to $12,000 a month. Got a lot of money, a lot of money for Houston County. It's a, it's a lot of money for that landfill because I promise you, the rate we were going, we were going to have to raise some money somewhere to keep this landfill running. I mean, trash is a, everybody likes to talk trash. <laughs> uh, uh, we are, we're the only county around, and you can check me if you want to, be fine. We're the only county around that offers free landfill. If you go to Montgomery County, you go to Dixon County, Stewart County, Humphrey County, you're going to pay to get rid of your garbage. I don't care where you go, you're going to pay for it. Because Montgomery County, I'm, I talk to them all the time, and they tell me, they say, Mr. Mayor, you're still giving them freebies away. I said, well, we're doing good, so as long as not getting into the taxpayer where we have to raise taxes, we're going to keep giving it to them. We don't we don't want to raise taxes. That's and that's the reason 
That's the reason I told them we're going to fill these boxes up because if you send these half empty boxes out, I promise you there will be a tax increase to cover the landfill, just to cover the landfill. I mean, you're talking $120,000, $140,000 a year, and that's big money for Houston County. I mean, we. $50 is a lot to me for Eastern County. If we can save it, I, I want to save it. Uh, uh, but we've actually, uh, Mr. Mr. James and them, he got a compactor in before he went out. and We finally got it wired up and actually got it going and got it running. And it's actually been a great, great thing for us. Uh, it's, I mean, it works like a charm so far. But, it compacts those boxes good, and like I said, if, as long as we're saving the ten to twelve thousand a month, I'm tickled. I'm happy, and I, I hope my commissioners are happy. Uh, three commissioners here tonight. I, I work for them. They don't work for me. <laughs> they, these guys are. They're the. They're the ones that I, I work for them. I just. I'm just a, a bug and a bug on the wall when they come to me. There's fourteen of them, but you know, I, I sit there and but they run the county and do a great job. I mean, Glenn and, and uh, Randall and Howard. I mean, Howard, Howard's a mentor to me. Me and him. I mean, which I went. Randall was on the commission when I first got elected in ten. Howard came on in fourteen, but. Howard calmed me down two or three times in meetings. <laughs> I would get a little excited and he'd just kind of reach over and touch me a little bit and calm me down. But, but he doesn't get excited. He, he's all business. Sometimes people say he's a little dry, but he's a good dude, I promise you. And very intelligent. But, uh, and I, if I call Randall or Glenn and ask them, they're always, anything I can, they can do to help. They're, and that's what we need in the county. I mean, our county is... Uh, we're small. I mean, we are small compared to ever. You can't compare Houston County to nobody around. I mean, we, you can't compare us, not even to Stewart County. I mean, they're almost double our population. But, you know, to me, this is home. I mean, it's home and it always will be. But the one thing I say about Houston County, I've lived, like I said, I've lived here my whole life. We grew up poor as, as they come. I mean, we were, our family was poor. But I, I told everybody, if people lived on our road, we, everybody was poor. <laughs> no, there wasn't no rich people back when we were kids. But there, there's a lot of money today. I mean, there's a lot of money out there today. But, you know, Houston County is the, you always know, if somebody gets in trouble, there's always somebody to help, you know. And that's, that's what you want. You want somebody to, I tell everybody all the time, you know, somebody's in trouble, try to pick them up. Don't step on them. <laughs> Don't step on them and try to squash them on down because the, the ground will get hard sooner or later and they won't go no further. <laughs> you know, the worst, worst problem in Houston County, or my, my opinion, and that's just my opinion only, but there's a guy that I've never met, and if y'all ever find him, bring him and let me see him. His, his name is Dave. You always hear, well, that's what they said. Well, who is they? I mean, if you, if you find him, please bring him. I'd love to meet him. I've heard of him my whole life. I've never met him. But, uh, you know, getting off the landfill, you know, in September we we actually got a grant for the lake down there. Uh, we did some work down there. Uh, we cleaned out around the ponds and we've actually got signs. Uh, you, you will see them in the next couple of weeks. Uh, from Tennessee Ridge all the way to the lake, we've got new signs all the way to put up. And they, they finally did come in uh, about two weeks ago. We, the cold snap, we just hadn't had a chance to put them up. I mean, we, we try to use, we actually do have a maintenance guy that works for the courthouse, and he's, he's our go-to guy. He, he helps us a lot. He helps Melissa. He helps anybody that needs help. But he also works at the landfill if we need him. I mean, that's where he came from. But he, uh, he I, I told him the other day, I said, when this weather gets pretty in the next couple of weeks, you know, if it doesn't get too bad, when he put these, and he said, I'm, I'm ready to put them up, you know, whenever. So you'll see some new signs. Uh, they, it's just part of the grant. I mean, when you get a grant in the county, everybody says, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you? But a lot of times the, the grant is specifically, you've got to spend it for certain things. I mean, you can't spend it for, 
this or that. You got to spend it specifically for this. You know, we got a uh, we got an opioid grant, and uh, it says we cannot spend it for nothing but you know something to do with the drug use. But we partnered with Aaron Church and Nazarene, Daniel Meadows, and trying to help him some, and he's trying to get a program started for opioid addiction, you know, in the county, and hopefully it will work. But, you know, the lake area down there is, uh, we've actually got two grants now that we're waiting on. I actually talked to Mr. Rye today, Seth Rye, and we thought we would hear about one of them in December, but it, it hadn't come through. But he said that they told him uh, yesterday that he would hear by the end of the month. They're actually, uh, they got about an $850,000 grant we have applied for for the lake down there. They're going to, and it, it, it's just a specific grant to, to uh, it's for the big boats out there on the river. They're going to make some kind of a dock for those. I mean, I hope we get it. It's 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 a hundred percent grant. We're it's not going to cost the county a penny. And uh, Anything we can get to better our county, especially if it's not costing the taxpayers nothing, we want it. But uh, then another one, there's another grant for our county commission approved uh, giving some of the art money for 240000 to Tennessee Ridge and the city of Erin for water infrastructure. I mean, Tennessee Ridge is, uh, I know water has been a hot topic the last couple of weeks, but uh, when you're dealing with zero weather and 20 mile an hour below a wind blowing, that's Mother Nature. You're not going to win. I mean, you can't beat Mother Nature. But this, could we do some things? Can you prepare for things? Maybe a little better, but I don't know. This 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 uh, coal spill was all across the country, and I mean, we everybody had the same problems we did. But Tennessee Ridge is, is they need a they need another well. I mean. They can't supply water for, you know, if, if we have growth in that area from the ridge to the lake, they can't supply water. I mean, the city of Erin sells Tennessee Ridge water today, even today. But uh, that's, that's one of the grants. We, we've got a, this other grant. We should be hearing about it in February, and they're actually wanting to add some more line down there in the ridge somewhere down toward the lake. But that will be... Stony and M's project there, but the grant is, I don't, whether we get it or not, I don't know, but I, I really feel like we will get it for sure. Uh, we may not get the one at the, for the boats, but we, we, I think we will get the water infrastructure grant. Should know in February, we'll, we'll try to get it in the paper for everybody. I mean, that's, you know, that's something we try to do is, I don't want people in the dark. I want, I, I want, uh, I've been in the dark before <laughs> as a commissioner. I mean, I've been in the dark, and I went into the grocery store, and people asked me stuff, and I didn't have a clue what they're talking about. But uh, I don't want people. I want everybody to, you know, I want everybody to know what's going on in the county, especially because it, it affects everybody. Uh, whether you like it or not, it affects you. I mean, it does. But uh, coming from the lake end, you know, uh, we've actually... Uh, our fire chief to actually today. I mean, uh, we got Mr. Stanley there, and he's been struggling for years. I mean, trying to keep the fire department going and with equipment. And a lot of years we didn't have any money. The county commission, we didn't have any money to, to give. I mean, it's been tight. I mean, there's been a few years we didn't give nothing to nobody. But we have been blessed the last few years, and we're doing better. But uh, he actually got him another, we got a grant for $285,000 to buy a new fire truck. We did get that grant. Uh, we got to match some money on it. The county does, but we, we are in good enough shape to do it. But he needs the truck. And uh, I had actually worked at TVA for years. And I actually had a couple of friends that worked there. And I, I he was, he'd been trying to get a brush truck for the county and he couldn't get one. And, or we hadn't, we hadn't got one yet. And buying a new truck today is, I mean, you, you just buy, well, just like the fire truck, he, he just, we got on a grant. They, they were already telling him it's probably going to be a year, a year and a half before he gets it. 
if we order it today, it'd be that long. But I, I'd actually got a couple of friends that worked at TVA, and I said, well, what about y'all donating a fire truck? I mean, a, a truck for us. I said, I know y'all use fleet trucks, and when you get done with them, you turn them back in, or you sell them on gut bill. So actually, I got called a couple of weeks ago, and they're going to they give us a truck. So me and Mr. Stanley went to Common City today and got it at TVA. So that was a great donation for the county. It saved us probably $25,000. I mean, the thing about it, you know, uh, my boss told me a long time ago, if you want something, Joey, you're going to have to fight for it because ain't nobody going to give you nothing. So I feel like if you want something, you better ask. And the worst thing that can happen is they can say no or they can dodge you the next time they see you. It don't really matter to me if they dodge me, but they just save me a little breath. But if they dodge me, but, but I will ask them again. I'm a pest now when it comes to money. I'm, uh, that's why I used to tell George Clark that he was the biggest Jew in the county. <laughs> because every time a water grant came open, he was in Nashville trying to get it. And he did. He did a, he got a lot of grants, I mean a lot of water in this county under his administration. But uh, after, uh, you know, I think the fire truck, will, I think that will help Mr. Town. He, he hasn't had any pain. I mean, we, we, we went out there this morning to get it, and we didn't have a clue what it was going to look like. And it was a F550 Ford, I mean, a ton and a half truck, and got a winch on it that would probably pick up this building. But hey, uh, it's free. It didn't cost the county nothing. And, it saved the taxpayers. I mean, it, it saved the commissioner from having to dig for money to get it. Uh, I didn't do it. Uh, I just happened to have a friend or a couple of friends. That, you know, if you, whether you believe it or not, you got to have friends in life. <laughs> I mean, and it's kind of like the politics part of it. Politics, you know, politics is it's good, it's bad, but sometimes you need them to help you a little bit. And. Uh, you don't want to get on the bad side of them if you keep from it, but they all have the same disease. They, they like money too, but that's okay. Uh, I still have got some great friends that are politicians and are, that are good friends. I think I could call them tonight and tell them we had a disaster here in the county. I think that they, I think they would help us. I really do, if they could, what they could do. But uh, also, to, this, this all happened today, this afternoon, I mean, uh, about 2 o'clock, I guess, but last Friday, uh, we had, there's a guy named Brian Collins, he worked for TDOT, and they're the ones that administer a lot of grants for the county, and uh, so I had talked to him in October, and he said, what's one of your visions to have in the county, and I said, well, I, I said, I'd love to have a welcome center. Houston County. Uh, I'd love to. I said, I don't want one. I said, it doesn't have to be as big as Stewart County, but I would like to have one. But I said, we can't afford it. So he actually called me today and told me that they pretty sure that we're going to get a grant to build a welcome center. Uh, he's actually going to meet. He's, he's getting uh, Mr. McClanahan. It's, uh, is actually the money guy out of Nashville, and they're actually coming to Houston County to meet with us. And I will have my commissioner there and the city mayor and stuff. But uh, he said it looked like he said I'm he said I'm just saying he said I'm I'm not going to guarantee it, but he said they just turned some federal money loose, and he said it's for the smaller counties, and he said I really think you'll get it. He said and uh, if you still want it, I said absolutely. I said he said and I think it's. Uh, he said, don't quote me. He said, it might cost you a little bit, but he said, I think it's going to be 100% paid by the federal government. So whether you like a welcome center or not, I mean, uh, Stewart County kind of got condemned when they first built it by a lot of people, that those day people, but you go down and try to rent that place today, you may have to wait a day or two because that, that place is nice. I mean, it, it's busy all the time. But, we need a place for our meetings. I mean, for the county, and there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the county where people would go and use it. And, um, you know, uh, just things, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, you, things you have to do. Uh, is the county mayor's job easy? Not all the time. 
I love it. I do like it. I don't know why, but I do like it. But uh, it's not for money. Well, I, I left the job making more money than I was making here. And I, that's not a, that's not, that's a, I know that's a fact. But, uh, and I, I did, I sure didn't do it for power because I don't need the power. Uh, ain't for one person got power in this world and he, he gone. He's, uh, he blesses us all. We're all blessed. It doesn't matter who you are. The worst, the, the sorriest guy in the world is still blessed. You know, and he still loves everybody. I mean, he, he, he loves the sinner just like he loves me. So, you know, uh, just, there's, like to say, you know, there's, there's things, that, yeah, I'm not going to say there's not going to be things that's going to come up. It's going to be a headache. There, there always is. I mean, uh, James, James went through a headache that I absolutely dreaded. When I ran, I thought, boy, I hope he gets that hospital gone before I get in there. But I didn't want to fool with it because it, it is a, it's a burden for the taxpayers. And it has been. But it's gone. And, I, and I, hey, I wish them well. I hope they do good. And uh, I hope they keep, I think, the, I actually think the older people in the county deserve to have some kind of health care here. You know, and if, if our industrial park or anywhere is ever going to have any business here, you know, this day, John, that came in here or coming in, that's one of the first questions they asked. What kind of medical facility you got? They want, they want that hospital closed, you know. But, uh, you know, besides that, uh, uh, we got a city park at Tennessee Ridge. I mean, that, this happened today, too. I mean, it looks like everything happened today, but they... Uh, <coughs> I don't know if you've been to City Park out there beside the Veterans Center or not, but it, it looked like a disaster. I mean, it, it, it needs work. It needs a lot of work on it to make, I mean, it looks terrible. But a uh, lady come in and she's trying to, Miss Tatum, trying to get it back like it needs to be, and I told her our county would try to help her some. And we will try to help her, I think. Uh, uh, but I actually made a call to Mr. Steve Hall, the uh, phone company, and he said that they will, they're going to install these hotspots for Wi-Fi and stuff there. They're going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks. And that, that was one thing Ms. Tate, she said, there's no Wi-Fi at all there. And people can't pick up. And so I, I said, well, let me call. I was actually going to call Meriwether Lewis first. And I said, well, let me call Steve. So Steve said, let me get back to you. In about two hours, he called me back and said, they said they'll, they'll put it in for nothing to help you out. So just little things like that is that's kind of what you got to have, I mean, to operate the county. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some people, I, I know I'm crazy, but that's okay. But, you know, I go, to, I go down to White Oak. It's, once every, it's the second Friday every month, Mr. and Ms. Walker there. They have a, I call it a shindig, or it's just a, a little gathering place, there's, sometimes there's, I've been there when there was five people, and I've been there when there was 50. But I love that place. You know, I love that place. Uh, I do. We go, it's almost guaranteed that we're going to be there unless something bad happens. But, you know, you look at the history of that stuff, it's dying out. <laughs> there's people, the older people, there's not a lot of young people coming up. To, I don't know if they're too lazy or... If you, I guess if you could sit at home and operate with a computer or a cell phone, they'd do it. But, but this stuff, is, I mean, I, I told Mr. Walker while I go, I said, you know, 20 years from now, this place might not exist down there. But if you ever get a chance, it's, it's worth the drive to go down there on Friday night, the second Friday of the month on 6 o'clock. And I'm not I'm not trying to testify for them, but they do. They, it's a, they have a good place. Everybody's welcome. It, it is good. But... Uh, you know, I, I don't want to take up a lot of your time talking. I mean, I, I'm, I think our county is moving the right way. I mean, I think we are. Uh, you know, getting back on the landfill, like I said, we, we don't pay any user fee or anything. Is it going to happen down the road? Yes, it is. I mean, that's, there, it doesn't matter who the mayor is. It's going to happen. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening in the next year or two by the savings we're doing. I think we're good. But eventually, it's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, 
Because I actually talked to Montgomery County yesterday, and they said they're fixing, probably going to go up again on our trash this year. Uh, because everything's costing them so much more money to operate. And, uh, but I, I will say this to the mayor, I mean, I, if, if I can help you, I will. I don't care what it is. If it, I mean, a couple of weeks ago when it was ice on the ground and zero, I delivered water. I carried people to the store. They couldn't get out. But that's what you're supposed to do. That nobody, nobody made me do that. I did it because I wanted to. I think that's, I think that's every citizen's responsibility. If you can get out and help somebody that can't get out, go help them. I mean, I could have sat in the office and said I couldn't go, but I had people call me and ask me could I carry them to the dollar store to get medicine. I had one guy ask me could I carry them to get cigarettes. I said, yeah, we got to have them cigarettes. <laughs> I did tell him, I said, well, I said, yeah, we got to have them cigarettes. You know? It's just ice and snow on the ground. we got to have them cigarettes. <laughs> but I, you know what? I carried them to the back of the store. Yeah. I didn't do it for fame. I done it because I thought it was the right thing to do. But, uh, you know, I, I, I promise it. I, I made this promise when I came in here that it may not be what you want to hear, but I promise I won't lie to you. I will not lie to you. It may not, it may not be the answer you want to hear, but and I will fight for every free penny we can get. If it'll benefit this county, I want it. I, I will. I, I'm about like GE on that. Not, I'm just only different than me and him. I'm about seventy-five hundred pound heavier. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, besides that, I mean, there's, there's there is a lot going on in the county, but. There's a lot of good things going on. I mean, you hear, you know, if you look at Facebook, it's not just the county, it's everything. I mean, it's the same people all the time. It's, they're negative. If, if you give them a $100 bill, they complain because you give them five twenties. You know, that's, that's the kind of people you got doing that. And, and I don't get on it much. I hardly ever get on it. I did when, during the campaign, but I think, we, I think we're better than that. As a county, I think we're better people than that. <coughs> the whole county, I mean, why? I mean, and I tell people all the time, you know, they say, well, where is Houston County? I said, well, if, if you look right up that little curve on the state of Tennessee, that's Stewart County. I said, we're the next door neighbors to them. But, uh, you know, uh, we're all uh, pretty blessed, though. Seriously, if you look, Look around the world today. Uh, you know we're uh, our veterans. I, I mean, I hey, listen. I love all the veterans. I mean, I'm serious. I love all the veterans. And uh, people say, well, why? I, I mean, you look at your history. You know, there's people that hate us because we're sitting here tonight, free to do what we want to, to listen to me. There are people that hate this. I mean, they do. They would stop it if they could. So the veterans over the years have fought to keep this country free, and uh, my advice to anybody is don't uh, don't ever let somebody make you feel like you're not free, or and uh, don't ever let somebody you know. There's people that <laughs> they uh, they hate churches. <laughs> they hate churches. They, they, and I think the Lord has, I mean, this is my opinion, the Lord has blessed this country so much. We're a young country compared to a lot of places. But he blessed us a lot on faith and religion. Uh, and I, I see, it looks like he's, he's firing these warning shots trying to wake us up. <laughs> I just don't know if uh, we're going to wake up, but I, I'm, a, I'm a little worried about the United States as a general, as a whole, but that's the reason I say we are blessed where we live. Uh, I mean, we, there's some parts of the country, it's a fast-paced world, a lot faster than it is here. And uh, I like going out and feeding my cows <coughs> and riding my four-wheeler up the road. There's a lot of places in the world you can't do that in this country. Uh, I like riding my Mr. Bateman. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to tell one quick story about Mr. Bateman, and then I'm quitting. But, his uncles was probably the two. You you missed a blessing by them not being here because they knew history. 
they knew history of Houston County, I promise you. Uh, back in 1990, Mr. Bateman's uncle cut some timber. They, their land joined mine in the back. And I went back there one day, and there was a line of trees about here, width of a wall, maybe a little further, and they were all still standing. They'd cut everything else, and I actually thought they were theirs. And so I actually seen Mr. George, and I said, Mr. George, I said, how come y'all leave all them trees back there? I mean, it was a straight shot. They were about all oh, 40, 50 foot wide. Big old trees. I mean big. He said, they're not ours. He said, they belong to you. He said, I said, well, I thought the line. He said, no, no. He said, the line is right up there. He said, your, your granddaddy and daddy put the fence down. He said, up. He said, he said they could have come on down further, but he said they didn't. So anyway, I said, well, I'm going to cut the timber. So the next year, I cut it. And the first tree they cut down, the, the saw guy cut it down. And it had a scar in it about this long. So he cut another tree down. And it had a scar about this long. I said, what in the world? I said, what's them scars on them butt logs like that? He said, well, it hurts them when you saw them. But he said, fire's been in these woods. He said, it's been fire burned, and that's what gives it a scar. So I seen Mr. George, and I said, Mr. George, I said, any of that timber y'all have scars in it? He said, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, all of it did. He said, I said, well, I never, he said, no. He said, it happened in 1937. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that. I mean, he said, he said, it started at Tennessee Ridge. And he said, a, a, a guy was burning some trash, and it got, got out, and he said, it burned all the way to the Cumberland River. Oh, wow. 1937. <laughs> He said, uh, he said they didn't have nothing to He said they thought they had to stop some road out there, and he said the fire jumped it. But he said it, it burned all the way to come the river. But uh, I did not know that. Yeah. He knew. I, I, if I'd have asked him, uh, when I went to his house, I used to go in his house, he had every steward Houston County paper that they ever made. They had them stacked up. <laughs> and that's not a joke. <laughs> a, he had a lot of newspapers. But... Uh, I do appreciate your time I'm listening to me, but I thank everybody, and I do, uh, I love this county, and uh, I hope everybody else treasures your moments on, in life here, too, because we're just a day away. Our clock is ticking. Thank you Anybody got any questions? I'd be glad to try. To I'm trying to, but I, I'd be glad to answer any of them. Go ahead, see. What is the McKinnon Fire Department building used for? The McKinnon Fire Department? That building at McKinnon. That is where they got a they got a pumper truck in there. Is that yes, pump, uh, pumper truck. It houses a pumper truck. It's got a truck in it. Yeah, I thought it had the pumper truck, but I believe it's got a tanker. One of the ones that he was talking about replacing. He's one he's going to replace. What's the tanker? What's the difference in a tanker and a pumper? Um, typically, the the pumper has about a thousand gallons on it, and the tanker has about two thousand. Okay. okay. It houses a truck that fights fire. Correct. Okay. We've got one there. We've got uh, got one on Yellow Creek out here, uh, or on 49, is that out there at the fire station. <coughs> and then uh, the main office is up here at, <coughs> on 49 up here. Any other questions? Uh, I'll try to answer. Go ahead. If they made a statement yet where they figured on putting a welcome station. That'll be uh, if we apply for the grant, and I, I know we will. I know we will apply for it. It'll go before a committee. They'll pick a site somewhere. I tell you what's going to be. It'll be close to another county line, won't it? Sir? It'll be close to another county line, or are they going to set it somewhere in the middle of Houston County? I'm, I'm guessing. I, I don't know because I won't be the one to make the decision, but I'm going to say it's probably going to be somewhere on 149, if I was guessing. That's where most of the traffic is, isn't it? The, the traffic is going to that end of the county. Yeah. I mean, uh, city, right here in town, you can't build anything. Everything's in a flood zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not going to give you the money to build something in a flood zone. Uh, not a lot of places on 149, really. 
uh, maybe a couple of sites, not a lot, but they're, if we get the grant, I promise you we'll find a place for it. <laughs> <laughs> these guys here will make sure, they, I know these three here will be pushing for somewhere for a if, if we get the grant. Yeah. The money won't, it won't go unused. Anything else? Be glad to try to answer. Dale, you got something? No, my phone's broken. I apologize. <laughs> well, I do thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion to adjourn. We will adjourn and hope to see you in February with Sean Tail. Try to find something about uh, World War II era. And uh, we'll see you in February. Good Lord willing, and the weather cooperates. Thank you.